In this video, I'll be explaining what triplets are and how to calculate the value of a group of triplets. It's very important that you are very comfortable with note values before watching this video, as understanding triplets relies very heavily on the identification of note values. Have a look at my video on note values first if you need to. Triplets are a group of notes, and there's usually three of them in a group which are played in the time of two. I'll explain more about this in a moment, but to start, let's make sure we know what triplets look like. All of these are examples of some common triplets you might come across. Firstly, notice how they are identified as triplets by the little three above the notes. Just be aware that the three can sometimes appear below the notes. In these examples, there is a small bracket to clearly identify that the notes are triplets. Again, just be aware that sometimes a small little curve instead of a bracket is used. In these examples, there is no bracket or curve, as you generally don't need to include one when the notes are beamed together. So, the important thing to remember is that if there is a three above or below the notes, then they are triplets. If there is no three, then they are not. This seems pretty obvious, but this simple rule trips up a surprising number of music students. These are not triplets. It's merely a full bar of quavers in 3-8. With no small 3 above the notes, they cannot be triplets. This bar, however, shows two sets of triplets. In fact, it's a full bar of triplets in 2-4. The 3 must appear above the notes to show that they are triplets. If we take away the 3, then this would be a very confusing bar. 2-4 means that there must be exactly two crotchet beats in the bar. But if we count the value of all the quavers, then there would appear to be three crotchet beats in the bar. So a simple but important point is to make sure you know how to identify and draw triplets. OK, at the start of this video, I said that triplets are a group of notes which are played in the time of two. So how do you calculate the total value of a group of triplets? Well, when the triplet values are equal, it's fairly straightforward. Here are some triplet crotchets. To work out what their total value is, we take just two of the note values from the triplet, two crotchets, and sum together they give us the answer. In other words, triplet crotchets are equal to a rhythmic value of two, or to look at it another way, triplet crotchets are played in the time of two crotchets. Here's a bar of 4-4 four, four to explain this a little clearer. And as you can see, I've put two crotchets on beats 1 and 2. This means that we have two spare beats in the rest of the bar. Now, there's a whole range of rhythms that we could pop into these two beats. Two crotchets, four quavers, one crotchet, and two quavers. The list goes on. By using triplet crotchets, which we've just worked out to have the value of two, we can squeeze in three crotchets into the time of two. Now, of course, the big question is how do you rhythmically play this passage? Well, that is outside the scope of this video as we're concentrating on just how to calculate the values of triplets. Let's look at some triplet minims. As the note values are equal, we take just two of the note values, two minims, and together they equal four. In other words, triplet minims are equal to a rhythmic value of four. Or to put it another way, triplet minims are played in the same time as two minims. Let's look at our bar of four four to prove the point. In four four, we would be allowed a maximum of two minims in the bar as they have a total value of four. The use of triplet minims means we can have three minims played in the time of two. Again, exactly how this is played is outside the scope of this video, but understanding their rhythmic value is key before you start playing them. Here are some triplet quavers. As the note values are equal, we take two of them and we can see that they are to be played in the same time as two quavers, or the rhythmic value of one. Here are some triplet semiquavers, and they are played in the same time as two semiquavers. So, remember that when the triplet notes are of equal values, as on the screen, two of the same note values will tell you the total value of the triplets. 
Before we move on to triplets which do not have equal note values, just be aware that triplets can also contain rests. Have a look at this triplet. When calculating the total value of triplets, don't be put off by rests. Treat the rests as values. So while there are two notes and one rest, they are each worth half. Because all of the values are equal, we can still easily work out the total value of the triplet. We take two of the values and sum together, they give us the total value, which is one. Here are some more triplets. Don't be fooled by the rest. The values all equal one. Therefore, we sum two of the values and that gives us the total value of the triplet, two. OK, so what about triplets that do not have equal values or contain less or more than three notes? Well, this is a little trickier, but once you get the hang of it, it does get easier. There are a few steps to this, so let's try an example. Here's a triplet. Quaver, two semiquavers and a quaver. So there are four notes in this triplet. So not only are the note values different, there are four notes in this triplet. Let's work through the steps you'll need to take to work out the rhythmic value of this triplet. Firstly, add together the values. Half plus a quarter plus a quarter plus half equals one and a half. Make a note of that number. Secondly, divide your answer by three. Always by three when looking at triplets. So one and a half divided by three equals a half. Step three, we convert the answer into a note of the same value. So as our answer is a half, the note which has a value of a half is a quaver. Step four, we then add two of these notes together to give us the total value of the triplet. So a quaver plus a quaver equals a value of one. We can therefore say that this group of triplets has a rhythmic value of one. Another way of looking at it is that this triplet can be played in the time of a crotchet or a quarter note. Let's place it in a bar of four four so we can see it exactly. Here's beat one, here's beat two, beat three with our four note triplet and here's beat four. As I say, calculating triplets when the values are unequal is a little trickier than triplets where the values are equal. However, it does get easy with practice, as I said. Let's try another example. There are just two notes here, but they have different values. Here's our list of instructions, and we'll start by following instruction number one. Add together the values. So two for the minim plus one for the crotchet equals three. Make a note of this. Step two, divide your answer by three. So three divided by three equals one. Step three, we convert this answer into a note of the same value. So as our answer is one, the note which has a value of one is a crotchet or quarter note. Finally, step four, we then add two of these notes together to give us the total value of the triplet. So in this case, two crotchets equal two. We can therefore say that our group of triplets has a rhythmic value of two. Let's place it in a bar of four, four, so we can see exactly how it fits. Here's beat one, here's beat two. Next is our triplet, and because it has a rhythmic value of two, it takes up two beats in our bar, these two, beats three and four. Now, I could go on providing example after example, and there are endless examples, but it is more about practice with triplets. Remember, if the values of the triplet are equal, like this set of triplet minims or half notes, it's very easy to work out the total value of the triplet. Just take two of them, sum them together, and that gives you the rhythmic value of the triplet. However, if the values are not equal, follow these instructions we looked at a few moments ago. In all cases, if there is a rest or rests in the triplet, just treat them as values and include the values in your calculations. Triplets are tricky and lots of students do get confused by them. Please do persevere with them, perhaps even try them in a composition as they can make a simple melody a little more interesting. In the meantime, I do hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching.